well-known fact is that the Jewish calendar traditionally has not one, but four New Year's Days, each with a different purpose. One for recounting the years of the reigns of the kings in ancient Israel. One for animal tests to the priestly class, similar to what we know today as the new tax year. One to commemorate when the world was created. And lastly, the date for determining the age of the trees. So this year, we wanted to find out how to be Shwat, which is the new year for the trees, is actually a lot more important to the Jewish calendar than people actually know. Rabbi Shal Yudkevich of LifeKabbalah.org explains how the holiday of Tu Bishvat is actually intended to be a very spiritual holiday by the people who first mentioned it in the Mishnah and the Zohar. The Zohar says when it is said that Tu Bishvat is Rosh Hashanah, it says Rosh Hashanah la'ilan, Rosh Hashanah la'il, to the tree, not to the trees. We would have thought that that's the Rosh Hashanah for the trees. So what does it mean Rosh Hashanah for a tree? And he says, this is for a big tree up in heaven, which is the tree of life. The physical tree is a manifestation of a spiritual consciousness. And what is a spiritual consciousness? That's a spiritual consciousness of wholeness. Same way, says the Zohar, a tree has many, many, many branches, leaves, uh, roots. Most of them you don't see. But it's one entity, same thing, the earth is made of many, many, many different pieces and parts, which could be species, individuals, nations, different people. It's all so colorful because there's so many kinds of everything, and all of them are really part of the same one tree. The understanding that we all we all part of one whole. We're in the age of Aquarius, the age of oneness, the age of peace, the boundaries are falling away. And although some reactions are there, but the whole world becomes one uh, global village. And this is the consciousness of uh, Tu Bishvat. The director of the Overseas Student Program at Bar Ilan University, Rabbi Ari Khan, tries to shed a new light about how similar Tu Bishvat actually is to a very popular American holiday. When the Jews came back to Israel in the 16th century, after they kicked out of Spain and they came, and there was a whole Jewish community, we find a little bit afterwards people celebrating Tu Bishvat. Beforehand, all that you have had was like a minor thing in the liturgy. It wasn't considered to be a sad day, not quite a happy day, but not more than that. And we find that when the Jews came back, they started celebrating it, perhaps sort of like Thanksgiving in America, that we're here and let's celebrate the, the produce. And their intention is to celebrate ecology and fruits in the land of Israel and trees, so why not? Haya Nitzan of Orod.tv proves how the reasoning for the creation of the holiday 2,000 years ago is still valid to this day. God created everything uh, because he wanted us to learn from everything. We are supposed to learn from the ground, from the trees, from the fruit, and in this way we can just become better people. We as people and the trees together, we are on the same level because the same as a tree begins from a seed, then a plant, then a tree, then a fruit, and it gets and gets more and more. We are supposed to be the same. We are not supposed to be on the same, uh, on the same uh, position all the time. We are also supposed to grow. Many people see the Jewish tradition as something that belongs to the past. Through Tu Bishvat, we can see that the past is a present and the present is a future because the, we talk now a lot about ecology. People are sitting next to computers, next to the iPhones, and here Tu Bishvat comes to us and forces us to go out, to, to be connected and to go out to the nature. So one might ask themselves, what do I get from the holiday of Tu Bishvat? Rabbi Yudkevich seems to know the answer to that too. One thing that is important is to ask what do I, myself, what do I get from Tu Bishvat when it's coming? On Tu Bishvat, this is a time that the trees start to blossom. Like if Japan, they have the uh, cherry blossom. In Israel, it's the almond tree blossom. And in Israel, it's full of almond trees bloss blossoming all over during this time. And that means that this is the time for a person to blossom spiritually. We have to give rebirth to ourselves and how do you do that? Either meditation or, and plant trees, because then you connect to that power of growing from 
regrowth from beneath and eat the fruits of the trees. So this year, when you celebrate Tu Bishvat and eat all those sweet dried fruits, you will also be able to remember the many other aspects to this very fascinating Jewish holiday. For Jane One, I'm Ron Jacobson in Tel Aviv.